Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory Glory to God. God. Brothers and sisters, a long time ago, Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? That is a question that humanity, civilizations, have been asking since the dawn of time, what is truth? You might hear, you might have read, over the course of the last few years, articles on the internet that are talking about the decline of Christianity, the decline of Christianity here in America, maybe around the world, certainly in places like England. And the fact of the matter, there are certain branches of Christianity that are declining. That's true. And we might want to ask why. Isn't Christianity the faith of the apostles? Isn't, didn't Christ say that I will establish my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? At the same time, you might not have read many articles about the growth of the Orthodox Church, both here in this country and around the world. Why? Because death and destruction always sell more papers than the opposite. But the fact of the matter is, the Orthodox Church around the world is growing. In places you would be surprised to see the numbers of that growth in the last, let's say, 10, 20, 30 years. I like to give the example of Madagascar, where 40 years ago, even 30 years ago, there was no Orthodox present there at all. There was not one Orthodox Christian in Madagascar, but today there are like 50,000 or more, and the church continues to grow and grow and grow. In parts of Africa, they are seeing not just people come to the Orthodox Church, they are seeing whole tribes come to the Orthodox Church. Here in America, you may have heard of, and you only have to look around here to see it, you may have heard of the growth of orthodoxy in this country. If you don't read it a lot, within the last year, the Wall Street Journal did an article about it. But you have in this church 50 catechumens, here 40, here 31, in Southern California at one church, 73. Excuse me, 74. Here, last year, we baptized and chrismated eight. This year, we're getting ready to do six. Next year, probably more than that. People keep coming to the faith. Why? Because it answers the question that civilization and humanity have been asking for millennia, what is truth? You see, brothers and sisters, when we were created, we were created with something within us. It's often called the logis me, which in, is a Greek word translated, which means sort of the, the, the germ, the spark of a desire that has been placed in us, innately placed in us, in our soul, that wants to know what our relationship is with God. Who is God? Who is he? Where is he? How do I relate to him? What does he mean to me? Does he care about me? Does he love me? Did he create me? If so, what is his concern for me? And so you have this desire that's been placed in each and every one of us to seek out God, to find out where he is. How can I find him? How can I, when I find him, worship him? It's like that man in the scripture stories who was given his sight. And he was asked, do you know who healed you? And he says, no, I don't, but please tell me so I can go and worship him. That's the desire that's in us, brothers and sisters, the desire to know God, the desire to know our relationship with him. And if there is no relationship with him, to establish a relationship with him, to come to get to know he who has created us. And the Orthodox Church, brothers and sisters, answers that question. What is truth? Where is truth? How do I relate to it? What does it mean to me? And so forth and so on. 
It is something that is absolutely spectacular to think about. Because in these other groups and organizations, call them churches, in these other churches, people are questioning whether what is being presented to them in those places is indeed truth. And many are coming to the conclusion that their church, which maybe 30 years ago or 40 years ago or even 20 years ago, was preaching something that resembled the truth, is now not doing that. Is preaching all kinds of weirdness and heresy and things like that. And people innately are hearing this and they're going, this is not right, and they are leaving. That's not happening with us. It never has been happening with us, never. And right now the exact opposite is happening. People who are asking the question in the very depths of their soul, what is truth? are finding it in the Orthodox Church. Why? Because we are not an institution that exists outside of and separately from the Son of God. And this is the important distinction. We are not an institution that is separate from Him. He is the institution. His body is the church. And so when we become Christians, we are joined not to an institution, we are joined to his body. We become part of him, an integral part of him. The very person who declared and who said about himself, I am truth. I am truth. Not I'll teach you the truth, not I'll show you the truth, but I am the truth. And what I speak to you is the truth. And know that coming from me, the Son of God, you can have assurance that I am giving you the truth. And you can rest in that truth. Today, we are celebrating more than just the restoration of the icons in church. A little bit later, before the conclusion of the liturgy, we will have a procession with icons around the church. We will come back in and we will recite together the Synodicon, which is on the back of the bulletin. And then we will have a petition, a series of petitions regarding who is so great a God as our God, the great Brokimanon. But this is, as I said, more than a declaration of the fact that we have a bunch of pretty pictures in our church. Because when the church affirmed the holiness of icons and affirmed that it was good, that people should bow to them, kiss them, reverence them, venerate them, the church said, in fact, this was said not by the Seventh Ecumenical Council or during the restoration of icons. This was said by St. Basil the Great hundreds of years earlier. The veneration given to the icon passes to the prototype it represents. So in other words, when we kiss the icon of Jesus, we're not kissing a piece of glass behind which is metal and some picture and things like that. When we kiss the icon of the Theotokos, we're not kissing the icon itself, but we are kissing her. We are kissing him. We bow to them. We venerate them. This is what the church has declared. And it has further said, regarding a lot of other things, because every ecumenical council affirms the previous, we affirm in the seventh ecumenical council and in the restoration of icons, which we celebrate today, we affirm that truth has been given to the church, which is nothing less than the body of Christ, which is nothing less than that which we are all joined to. And the body of Christ can't be wrong, because Christ can't be wrong. And so if the church, the body of Christ, is declaring a teaching to be thus and so, we have a choice, brothers and sisters. We have a choice as to whether we will believe what the church is teaching, because if it, the body of Christ, is not teaching truth, then who is? And if it's not teaching the truth, then where is it? It has to be someplace, and therefore, I would argue, it has to be in the person of the Son of God, who is the church, of whom we are part, to whom we have been joined. And so when the church declares something to be thus and so, we have to have the assurance, number one, that we're hearing the truth, number one. 
Number two, it should give us a certain peace. A certain peace that we found it. We don't have to look anymore. We don't have to debate anymore. Even though those of you who have seen my podcast know that I debate others on these very topics. Because there are those out there who declare and who say, who claim that they have a truth that's different from ours. But how can you have a truth that's different from ours that was invented 1500, 1800 or whatever years after the church was founded? That's impossible. Impossible. Because the church has said, because the scriptures say, that the church, the body of Christ, is the very pillar and bulwark of truth. The pillar and bulwark of truth. And what I want to tell you then tonight is, or today is, that when we, when we in the church hear and affirm the things that we hear and will be affirming later today, we have that assurance that what we're hearing is the truth. We also know that this gives us a certain peace. We no longer have to look. We no longer have to search. We no longer have to worry. We no longer have to debate. We no longer have to do any of that. We have the peace that we're seeking, that what we hear, what we've been taught, what we read, what we proclaim, what we worship and so forth, is the truth. And we found it. And we can be joyful because we've come home and now we can rest in the knowledge of that. Isn't that wonderful? In the world, Jesus said, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And when we're in the church, when we're in this ark of salvation, we can have that assurance. We can have that peace of knowing that out there there might be tumult. Out there there might be trials and tribulations and temptations. And yes, they will come to us at times. But we have to know with regard to what we think and believe <laughs> and have always been taught and believed that all of that brings a certain assurance and peace to our lives. And isn't it wonderful with all of the other things we have to worry about that we can come here and we don't have to worry about whether what we're being taught, what we sing, what we hymn, what we proclaim, what we consume is something other than the truth that we are seeking and the peace that comes from it. You see, that's what this place gives us. That's what this faith gives us. That's what this is all about. And it is a wonderful, settling, peaceful thing that Christ brings to our hearts. And you know, Jesus once said, well, Jesus said a lot of things, and some of them sometimes sound contradictory. Because on the one hand, he says, my peace I bring to you, my peace I give to you. And then he says, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Now, how do you reconcile those things? We're not going to reconcile them right now. But the fact of the matter is, there are two different kinds of peace. The one that he gives, and the one that they give. And so you have a choice as to what you want to believe, in what you will put your trust, in what you will put your faith, in where you will find your peace. And you can know, as I have been saying over and over again today, you can know that in the Orthodox Church, we've already discussed, we've already debated, we've already fought over, we've already analyzed, we've already studied all of this, and we've come to certain conclusions, some of which you'll hear later today when we celebrate the triumph of Orthodoxy. Have that peace, brothers and sisters. Have that peace in your heart knowing that where you are, what you've embraced here, what it represents, who has given it to us, not only him, but all of them, that all of that has been passed down to us and has given us what we have today, this deposit of faith in its fullness. There is no more that needs to be added to it. There is no more that needs to be discovered about it. Everything that was needed to know was given on the day of Pentecost by our Lord, through the Holy Spirit, to his disciples who became apostles, and all his other disciples, and has been passed down to us from generation to generation, unchanged. Unchanged. 
And so because of that, we have peace. And the assurance of knowing that the things of eternity that have been given over to us can bring that to our life, to our soul, that we can enjoy them everlastingly for all eternity and never know or never doubt from whom we have it and whether it is good or right or whatever, we can know that Jesus has passed this peace on to us. Keep it here and be joyful in it. Amen. Amen.